Today I'm going to show you how just with a single image you can train a Flux Lora using something like a Stable Diffusion XL image or something else that you've created in the past with a whole bunch of flexibility and realism that you'd expect from the models that Flux has put out. Let's jump right in and I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so you've created a single Stable Diffusion image and you want to turn that into a Flux Lora that has all the flexibility of being able to create essentially unlimited images in different poses, different situations. And to get started, I'm going to create an image using Pixel Dojo. You could, of course, use Automatic 1111, Comfy UI, any of your local tools, even Focus or something like that. But the point is that you're going to start with one single image. So in this case, I'm going to say a photo of a European woman sitting outside of a cafe. And we're going to go ahead and generate an image using Realistic Vision 4. This is a Stable Diffusion XL fine-tuned model that's just a little bit higher quality than the base SDXL. But I'm going to take it a little bit step further and I'm going to click on this Enhance button. What this does is this takes my prompt and the prompt is a photo of a European woman sitting outside a cafe. It's going to take that, it's going to run it through a large language model that understands stable diffusion prompts and how they're structured and it's going to create a better prompt for more photorealistic results. So now you can see it says wearing a stylish summer dress, sitting in a small cafe table outside, sipping coffee. It adds all the extra details that you would want to get a really nice, compelling image. It also understands that Stable Diffusion XL only understands up to 77 tokens. That's its kind of context length that it's able to understand. So it limits the description to that length. Now with that, Here's the image that we get back from Stable Diffusion. And I went ahead and generated four of them just in case. I kind of like this first one. I like the scene, the setting. It seems like it has sort of that European vibe. It has the tiles outside that you see on the sidewalks out here. It's just a nice looking image. So we're going to go ahead and just click Save to my images. And that'll take just a second. And then the next thing I'm going to do, one of the things with Stable Diffusion images typically is that they have often flaws in the face. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the left-hand side here and you can see in the menu under Enhance, there's this Face Enhancer. And so we're gonna go ahead and send the image over there. And you can see when you jump in, you can go ahead and select the image. It says upload the image you would like to enhance. You have this slider that basically says quality or accuracy. So if you want something that's really subtle, you can slide it all the way over to accuracy. You want something that's just the highest quality possible, but maybe it's going to lose some of those facial details. You can slide it over to quality. The decision's yours, but I find that the middle sort of balanced setting is good for most cases. So now we'll just click fix it. And here we have our fixed stable diffusion face. Now, if you look at the slider, you can see quite a big difference in the eyes. One of the things about stable diffusion images oftentimes is it loses details in the face. And so you can see here with the eyes specifically, what a big difference. So the after image looks much better than the original image. So we're going to save this. And this is the image that we're actually going to use as our sort of base image to train our model. So we'll go ahead and click on save to my images for this one as well. All right. So if you've ever trained a flux or stable diffusion Laura before, you know that you need 15, 20, 30 images of the person in different lighting conditions, different clothing, different situations, backgrounds. How do you do that if you've just got a single image to start with? Well, fortunately, the tool set in Pixel Dojo has you covered there. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on consistent characters. We're going to go ahead and open that in a new tab. And what this allows you to do is upload a single image and then it does different poses of that person. So we can start with that image that we just fixed, this one over here. We can upload that as our base image that we're going to use. And then we can just leave the default settings. Number of poses will crank all the way up to four. And number of images per pose we're going to leave at one. And then go ahead and click on generate. Now in a few seconds here, what happens is we've got four different images of the same person, but in different poses. And this last one's kind of wonky, but these other three are quite good. So now you've got something more to work with. So we're going to go ahead and click Save All Images. And then we can even download these individually with the Download button to our file system. So we'll go ahead and do that for these three as well. So now in total, in just a few seconds, we've gone from having one image of our person to having four. 
but how do we get those different lighting styles, different backgrounds, maybe even different clothing? That's the next piece. And for that, we're gonna use another tool at Pixel Dojo called Magic Lighting. Magic Lighting is really cool because you can take your base image. We'll go ahead and load this one up here. This is one of the pose images that we created with consistent characters. Now you can select a lighting preset. You can see there are a whole bunch of different options. Sunny outdoor, office, forest morning, even mountain hiking. You can also, if you select one of these, you can change the different types of lighting or the direction of the light. So mountain hiking, for example, has overhead light by default, but you could switch this over to left side, right side, or even bottom based light. And you can see the image updates and you can see exactly the type of lighting style that you're gonna get from that. We're gonna go ahead and leave it at the default though. You can also go down to the advanced options and you could create your own preset. If you don't like any of these situations or scenarios, you can always come in here and just update and create your own. But for us, we're just gonna leave it how it is. Now we have our original image with a completely different background and also completely different lighting. You can see the light really shining down on her hair versus the original image. And even though we've got that same pose, it gives it just another perspective and another data point that it can use to create a better image. So we'll go ahead and save this one and also download it as well. Now let's pick another one of these. Maybe we'll go with indoor light just for a little bit different vibe. Click on generate. And now you'll notice in this one, you've got again, a different background, but you've also got that light coming in through this window from the side. You can see it adds shadows and everything else to her face. It does a really good job of creating a completely different environment. She's also wearing a completely different shirt color than she was originally. So these things make a difference when you're trying to train a flexible model. We'll go ahead and save that one as well. And then we're gonna change the pose. So remember we had those four original pose images. So we're just gonna take another one and we'll run this one through rainy day. Remember there's our original and now we've got this great rainy day. Looks like she's standing in a window. There's raindrops on the outside, completely different lighting once again and shadows gives it a completely different feel to the image. So we'll save this one and download it. And then we're gonna do this with a couple more images. So we're gonna take all of the pose images that we had before. We're gonna run this through two different relightings each. We're gonna do the same with the original image that we had. Now in the end, we're gonna have 12, 14 images. And that's what we're gonna use to train our flux model. And here you can see all the different variations. I'm over in my images. This has all the images that I've generated using this model. And you can see all the different lighting and different details that we've gotten from this. So even though we started with that single image, now we've got something that, you know, we can start with and really train a nice flux Laura out of. All right, all that's left to do now is to take these and add them to a zip file. So we're gonna go to our downloads where we have these downloaded to. We're gonna select all 19 images and then just right click and compress to a zip file. I'm gonna name the zip file Dojana. That's kind of like Pixel Dojo, Joanna, Dojana, I don't know, whatever. Doesn't matter what you name it, but just name it something that you can find later. All right, now we're just gonna open up the train menu on the left-hand side, and you're gonna see this Flux model trainer. Go ahead and load that up. This helps you set up everything you need to build a Flux Laura, and it is dead simple. In fact, you could just add your images here and click start and that's all you need to do but i'm going to take you through each step of the process so go ahead and choose your file we'll go ahead and choose dojana open and then trigger word this is really the identifier that's just associated with each of the images in the training set this is also the word that you're going to use to have the model understand what you want to create later on so when we go into the flux image creator we're going to say whatever this token word is that's going to tell it to create an image of this woman so we're gonna call it Dojana. You want this to be something unique. Talk is completely fine, that's why it's a default there. And then photo of, we'll say Dojana. This is the caption prefix. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this do something called auto captioning. Pixel Dojo sends all of the images through a large language model, a multimodal model that's able to analyze the image and then come up with captions or descriptive text that's associated with each of the images. This just helps train the model so it knows, okay, a blonde woman in a cafe sipping coffee also is associated with the trigger word Dojana. 
So this caption prefix just adds a little bit extra to the start of each of those captions. So a photo of Dojana so that that token is associated with the images as well. So we're going to leave that how it is. Training type, this is just for internal organization. If you're training a person, a style, an object, you might want to set that there. And then you've got this auto captioning. It's turned on by default. You don't really need to do anything there. From there, you can go ahead and just click on start training. Now, if you forget any of this information, there's also frequently asked questions down here at the bottom that'll step you through the whole process. And once training started, you can go ahead and leave this page. It's all gonna happen in the background and it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to train the model. And when the model's done, it's automatically going to get added to your My Custom Models section. So you can go ahead and click on that over here and you can see unnamed Laura, trigger word Dojana. This is the one that we just created. So we can go ahead in here and we can come up with a model name. We'll just say Dojana. And then you can even upload a thumbnail image as well, just to help keep things organized. So we're gonna go ahead and click one of the images that we started with when we trained her. And now we have our thumbnail and our title nice and organized. You can obviously, as you can see, you can train dozens of different models, even hundreds of different models, and it's all nice and organized. You can even search against them if you'd like. From here, the last step, we've got our trained model we can go over to create and we can jump into the flux image creator. I'll go ahead and collapse the menu so we've got a little bit more room here. We're gonna select our Laura. You can see that in the flux image creator, it's just what you'd expect from any AI image generator. You've got a prompt. You can select your aspect ratio and such. And down here at the bottom, you've got all your custom Lauras. So you can click on Doja and then you'll see what happens here is it automatically pre-fills a photo of Dojana up here in the prompt box. This is really cool because it just takes a little bit of the extra effort out. You can select the different aspect ratio. So we'll go with Instagram portrait. And then you can see you've got the custom Laura named here with a strength slider. You can increase or decrease the strength. That just gives a little bit more adherence to that Laura as you generate images with it. You also have a couple different flux model options when you wanna generate an image. By default, it uses Flux Schnell Laura. This is really fast and it gives pretty good quality results. I like to use this while I'm refining a prompt. I can do dozens of iterations on this really quickly. And then when I finally want something that's really high quality, I can go to Flux Dev Laura. This is the larger Flux model that you can run Laura's against. So for us though, we'll go ahead and start with Flux Dev. I'm not gonna adjust any other settings and we're just gonna click on generate. And look at that beautiful. You can see it's much more realistic. It looks so much better than that original Stable Diffusion XL, but it has this nice quality to it. And it's still that same person, that same model that you started with. I'm going to go ahead and save this one as well. Now, of course, you can come up here and enhance the prompt. So we'll say photo of Dojana at a cafe in Lisbon, but we're going to click on the enhance and that's going to run it through our LLM again so that we get a nice detailed prompt. And you can see here, really highly detailed prompt. And it knows that Flux can understand language at a deeper level than Stable Diffusion can. So it tends to come up with more complex prompts than it does for Stable Diffusion. Click on generate again. And now we've got Dojana sitting in a cafe. Oh man, there's that nice weird hand we get sometimes from Diffusion models. Flux for the most part is pretty good about hands, but sometimes it even gets it wrong. So let's go ahead and try another one, see if we can get a little bit better result. All right, that's much better. You've got those Portuguese tiles. This is very, very Portuguese-esque actually with the buildings and everything else. Nice lighting and you can see everything looks pretty spectacular as far as that goes. Now these models are really flexible too, so we could easily come up here and we could say something like Dojana as a superhero and check that out. Pretty spectacular result. And Flux doesn't have a lot of the image issues that Stable Diffusion used to have. If you've ever trained a Laura before, you had to run face fixing or some sort of post-processing on just about every image, especially if it was a sort of farther back image like this, where you had more of the person's body showing. But with Flux, you still get all those nice facial details, and it looks like a spectacular high quality image, even though you're showing kind of further back or you have multiple people in the shot. Here's another really cool thing about Pixel Dojo is 
With this setup, you can also run multiple LoRa's. So you could go over to Civit AI or Hugging Face. You can download and add a LoRa from there. So you can see this upload LoRa option. So you can add things like, you know, Barbie style, flux realism, even different LoRa's of different objects or clothing items. When you click on one of those LoRa's, you can see it just adds it up here. So you've got Barbie style and Dojana. We can go ahead and see what this does if we select and create another image. You can also notice that it adds whatever the trigger word is, it adds that up to the prompt here as well. So you can go back and adjust that if you wish. There you go. Now you've got our original character, Dojana, but as sort of a Barbie superhero. Really cool result. And you can go pretty wild here. You could have up to 20 different Loras for one single image. So really it's up to you how far you wanna take things. My goal with Pixel Dojo is to keep this as affordable and open to as many people as possible. So it's $25 a month for a plan. And what that gets you is you can train up to 10 Flux LoRa's. You can train an unlimited number of Stable Diffusion XL LoRa's. You can create an unlimited number of Stable Diffusion images and even Flux Schnell images. And then it includes 400 of those really high quality Flux Pro and Flux Dev images as well. And on the off chance that you run out, you can always purchase more credits if you need them. But for the most part, what I tend to do is just use Flux Schnell to kind of come up with a concept or an idea for one of my images or one of my lores that I'm using, and then generate that final image using something like Flux Dev. If you want to learn more, head over to pixeldojo.ai or check out the Discord. I'll drop a link down below. You can talk to some real customers and check it out. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. As always, I'm Brian Lovett, and we'll check you next time. Thank you.